Don't you over at the hospital visiting Ryan? I was held up in the kitchen. I thought I smelled smoke up here. What in the world are you doing, man? I'm smoking a cigarette. One cigarette. It's not the end of the world. Why? I'm upset. I need a little instant gratification. I know exactly what I'm doing. Well, you might as well eat a chocolate eclair with an arsenic cream filling for all the good that thing in your mouth is going to do. Yes, lady, don't start up on me, will you? I'm sorry, John. Why are you so upset? It's Dakota. What about him? I can't get through to him. He won't talk things out with well, me. It seems to me that's exactly the way the boy wants it these days. It's, it's no good for him to hold his anger so close to, to pride himself on being an outsider. It's his choice. Lady, spare a little bit of sympathy for the kid, will you? What kind of choice does he have if he feels the family doesn't understand him. If he feels we're all ganging up against him, huh? I mean, I, I've tried every which way, God knows, to make, him, to make him aware that we're not, but it doesn't do any good. John, you've done everything humanly possible. Dakota's not going to come around until he decides to. Can't stand by and watch the boy eat himself up. He's my son. I know very well he's your son, John. That's not the point here. You're not responsible for every action on his part, or uh, when he gives himself pain, or anybody else that he gives pain to. I uh, think maybe we shouldn't discuss this, you and I, right now, huh? Certainly, that's the way you want it. Yeah, that's the way I want it. Um, I think I'll go down and give Larry a hand at the bar. Right. because morning sickness, so your oh. son is going to take me for dinner. <laughs> oh. oh, that's lovely. Nate, are you all right? Yes, dear, yes, fine. Then why are you beating up on those pillows? Because I've already scrubbed my kitchen floor and I don't have any vegetables to chop. Oh. So who's the unlucky person that you're mad at? I've never felt any need in my life to apologize for my anger. It's useful and good at times as well as destructive, but there are other times when it's not to be discussed, it's just to be... just have to grin and bear it. Well, if I'm not the one that you're angry at... Oh, no, no. no. Couldn't hurt to uh, talk to me about it. <sighs> I'm not so sure about that. Maze, how many times have I sat in your kitchen and unburdened my soul to you? I don't think a discussion between the two of us about Dakota would be appropriate. Dakota, huh? What has he done? Uh, please. Come on, Maeve, don't be silly. You can talk to me. Based on the feelings that you once had for him, which were unavoidable, I don't want to sit in my living room and listen to you defend him. I just don't think I could bear that now, darling. What makes you think that I would necessarily defend him? Right now, I think he's acting like a, a child. No, oh, a spoiled brat is what he's acting like. So? What's the problem? John. John is as lost in his guilt as Dakota is in his rotten behavior. The two of them are quite a pair, let me tell you. And you're pretty angry. You know, I think you've handled things incredibly well. Oh, no, my darling, I haven't handled anything. No, yes, you have. You have welcomed Dakota into this house. You've, you've made him feel like one of your own children. I think you've been fabulous. Oh, please. Well, it's true. No. It's not fabulous that I resent him so much that I can't talk to anyone. Now, is that fabulous? No one? God. <laughs> Father McShane. Not bad for confidence, as they go. 
<laughs> no. But I think you've had lots of people that would want to listen to you. Oh. Since Dakota walked into this house, my darling, my John has been so guilty and feeling so bad, I don't, can't turn to him for help now, can I? And Francis was so mad, I only could make things worse, and Patrick was so busy trying to be his friend, I couldn't turn to him. And Siobhan, when we ever got on the topic, would just inflame ourselves. No, I had to manage it myself, and up until now, it worked, more or less. Nate, you can't do this all alone. That's why you feel so miserable. I feel like a tea kettle that's been brought to boil for too long. Well, then you've got to let off the steam. All right. I think the way Dakota is behaving toward Conchita and my Patrick is absolutely reprehensible. Considering all Patrick has done for him in terms of this family, I think it is not only, only ungrateful, but it is sadistic. And I want so badly to tell my John to stop feeling so damn guilty to straighten that boy out, or I'll do it myself, and that's not going to help any. Now, that wasn't so terrible, was it? feel better, don't you? What's terrible, dear, is I don't know what I'm feeling. It could be righteous indignation, or it could be just plain jealous. I... I hate the fact that my husband had an affair. I hate the fact that he has a son by another woman. And most of all, I hate that it's walking around in this house under my nose every day to remind me of that fact. And I also hate that I don't even know what I'm talking from. Maybe it's just wounded pride. Maeve, a woman with less pride could have never treated Dakota the way you did. I mean, opening your house to him, being kind and gracious. And your self-respect is the thing that got you through this marriage. No. I have only hung on to my resentment, my darling, and locked it up all inside me. And I can't anymore. I just can't. But you have to understand, it's not Dakota. It's Johnny. I know. That's right, sweetheart. That's who I have to talk to. My husband. But it's the thing that I'm most afraid of doing.